because they're seeding the clouds and making weather. Those trails that they spent, they paid $3,000 per flight to drop that stuff in the sky, sodium iodide and other chemicals. And look what it created, a disaster. Yeah. And the reason why this planet is cooling off so much is because of these trails. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why it's cold in California. You can't even go to L.A. without a jacket anymore. It's chilly. For me, it's chilly in Florida when it drops into like 79, 80. And um, I'm freezing up here. When I got off the plane, I was dead almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but 54 degrees is like, what? But this cooling effect is happening because of these particulates that they're dropping in the sky. Um, and uh, they're real. And now you can actually go online and Google geoengineering contract. And if you have a plane and a company, you can apply for a private comp a private uh, um, contract to drop this stuff in the sky for the government. Hmm. So, Why do you think the government's teasing all these like uh, UFO whistleblowers now? And why do you think all those projects are happening right now? Well, they're trying to get ahead of the game. So the UFO thing has come to a full head. They're real. But also we have some as well, UAPs, right? But they know what they are. They, we made them. Uh, and so now what they're saying is, where can we get more money? There just isn't enough money in wars anymore because we killed everybody. We already took over every country. Mm. There's nowhere else to go. I think one of the only central banks that are untouched is Iran. And there's no real money over there, so they're just not going to touch it. But what they said was, wow, we can still take money if there's a war, a pending war from space. Mm. So we have the Space Force. Now, we're going to get one of these UAPs, potentially, to do what we had happen in the Gulf of Tonkin incident that started the Vietnam War. It's going to attack one of our ships. And now everybody's going to be pissed off. Get them! And now we're going to send trillions of dollars without questioning into this space war that they created to fund projects that they own, that they sit on the board of directors of, that they're taking underground seed money from and building these multi-billion dollar weapons that will never see the light of day hmm. and siphoning money from the sweat of our backs. Hmm. So it's just a, a, a phony war to, to prop up the economy. It's a, it's a money maker. Hmm. You, know, uh, you know, all these companies, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, they're gonna do what they always do. They'll tell the government, oh, we'll put a bid in for this brand new fighter jet. And then say, you know, they'll take $15 billion down payment They'll work on it for 15 years and say, oh, it didn't work. We need another $5 billion to see if we can fix these couple things on it. Maybe we can get it to fly. Hmm. They'll give them another $5 billion, never works. You're talking oh, about the F-35? There's just many of them. That's just one of many. Yeah. Yeah, they'll scratch that and do another one. But meanwhile, they've made billions, billions of dollars, of dollars yeah. off of nothing. And they do it over and over and over again. And that's the technique they use. Now, hey, we'll, t we'll just take a couple trillion and we'll put it into the Space Force. Because hmm. we need space weapons. Do you think we went to the moon? Yeah, I do. I believe we went, we went to the moon, but we lied about it. And what I mean by that is, yes, we went to the moon, but when you analyze several things, the footage, you see a mix of real footage and you see a mix, mix of artificial footage. That's my, that's yeah. my thinking too. Now, yeah. why is that? I had to dig into this deeper. They discovered on the moon that there were artificial structures. Oh. There's evidence of war on the moon. There are, there's debris laying all over the place. They, the moon mission was a recognizance mission. And the race to the moon between us and Russia was who's going to get their hands on that ancient technology first and bring it back and reverse engineer it. That's what the whole moon mission was all about. And that's why they show you this barren landscape, fake video. Meanwhile, it's all about getting the technology that's laying around. China sent a, a, a rover up there and it got stuck in the debris. And they trans it transmitted an image back before they can delete it. And that went worldwide. It was global. That was like five years ago. Um, yeah, China. China rover stuck in the debris in the, on the moon. I went and researched the Clementine mission. It was a military, former top secret mission that became declassified. And as soon as I saw the name Clementine, I knew what it meant. It never came back. Oh, my darling Clementine, you were lost mm -hmm. and gone forever. I said, come on. I knew this thing didn't come back and it never came back. When it got, it was a low lunar orbit mission to go around the moon in a low lunar orbit. When it got to the backside, what they call the dark side of the moon, it crashed into something. But on its way there, it transmitted gigs of images back, which was made publicly available. And those images have a lot of anomalies in them, things that shouldn't be there. So we know for a fact that there's something going on with the moon for real. And the, we got the, free, the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, on the, on the black box audio from Apollo 11. Hmm. 
and anyone can download it now. And guess what it says? I was on one of the documentaries I'm in. Uh, the the astronaut is looking. What's his name? Neil Neil um, Neil Armstrong. He's looking down. He says, "Look at those concave uh, structures down there. I bet the people down there never get out." That's on the black box audio from Apollo 11. He wasn't joking. And so, what people? What is he talking about? And why would he say that front form of a dome, that form of a structure will make a dome, not a crater? So he's using code to say there's a dome down there and there's people inside of it. When they got Apollo 10, when they got to the back side of the moon, the dark side, comms, you're out of reach of comms now because the moon is blocking Blocking. you from Earth. Well, something hacked into their comms and started playing this weird music in their comms from that side of the moon, this weird whistling musical note sound thing, and they all freaked out. And that's on the black box for you as well. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a recording from the dark side of the moon. That's right. That was not planned by NASA or them. That's correct. Oh, yeah. (laughs) What the fuck? Yeah. They were like, who? Do you hear it? Do you hear that? Yeah, I hear it too. I can't. I hear it. I hear it. What is that? What is that? They were freaking out like crazy. They got their comms got hacked on the on the dark side of the moon. Couldn't we see the debris with like telescopes, like hobby telescopes? Yeah, you well, yeah. If you have a Celestron 130, which is what I do, a Celestron 130, you can see stuff on the moon mm-hmm. if you know where to look, which basins to look into. You can see stuff out there. Now, is it crystal clear what you're looking at? No, because of the Earth's atmosphere and the haze sometimes, or the cloud cover, or some of the the, the atmosphere kind of gives this wavy look, but. There's a lot of images pre-Photoshop that you can get right on NASA.gov that clearly will show you objects are there, things that don't belong. Um, And I think that, like I said before, the moon missions were recognizance missions. And did we get some stuff? Oh, we got some stuff. Like what's one object that was found that didn't belong? They didn't, they didn't, they don't, they didn't tell Oh, they're not going to tell tell But what they did do, they put, there's two things they did. One is they put an array of of, re- of uh, receiving dishes and sending dishes on the moon. And they transmit almost daily from Earth there via laser. What, are they, what data are they sending? What, who are they talking to? Why are they sending data back and forth to the moon daily? The next thing is the USGS.gov did a radar scan of the moon using the Arecibo uh, dish, which now is broken. Unfortunately, we got a lot of good data from that dish. But the Arecibo dish, before it broke, it took ground penetrating radar scans of the moon. And with those images from USGS.gov, you can clearly see 30 meters beneath the moon's surface. And you see what look like beams, structures, beneath the surface of the moon. Could that be why all those craters are the same depth and they don't really go much deeper? I mean, I don't know. Why it rang, why it rang like a bell when they, when they dropped the limb or dropped the, um, the capsule on it? It's possible. Um, and in the ancient text, and Lil talks to his uh, son about going on a trip to the moon, and they go away for a long, long time. And they had to wear their eagles masks because the atmosphere was thin. That's in the Sumerian tablets. How did they know that? And uh, so it's pretty crazy stuff. In one battle, one of the families loses the battle, and they're banished to live on the moon in the ancient text. Any truth to it? I don't know. That's just what it says. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, last thing I'm curious about. Mm-hmm. What's going on in the ocean? Oh man, the ocean is like the most undis- un- unexplored place in the universe for us, at least as humans. There's a lot of things going on underneath the ocean. Um, you know, these, um, if you fly, if you ever fly across the Atlantic to um, like Qatar or something like that or Dubai, if you can take uh, Qatar Airways, they have that screen that shows you the, the scan of the ocean as you're flying over it. Just look at that for a few hours. You'll start seeing things. You'll start seeing what looks like remnants of structures underneath the water, and which is pretty crazy because it's like a scan. So you're seeing what's down there. Even if it's dark outside, you can still see what's down there. And some of those things look like remnants of ancient structures that have been um, destroyed or flooded over or you know, whatever. Um, but underneath the ocean, it's one of the greatest places to hide if you're an advanced civilization, because nobody's doing any real research down there. Hmm. And matter of fact, when I saw that UFO when I was a kid, I told two of my friends what I saw, and we talked about it. (laughs) 
And they were saying, maybe it came from the ocean. I was like, yeah, maybe it's from the ocean. Now you gotta remember in 1977, we didn't have UFOs on TV. We didn't have all these, uh, you know, crazy cartoons talking about space. Uh, the, mo the, the spacey thing we had was the spaciest thing we had was Je the Jetsons. That was it. And that was more like fantasy to us. You know, we had the Flintstones and Tom and Jerry, Mickey Mouse, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, the Thundercats, which was pretty amazing because that, they were from the Pleiades. But um, yeah, they really? were. Yeah, yeah, they're Lyrans, Lyrans and Syrians from the Pleiadian, Pleiadian star system, the Thundercats. I, th I learned that later on going back to research it. So pretty crazy, but we didn't have, we weren't getting programmed about aliens and UFOs. So we just had to think about what, what these things could be or where they came from. And we thought maybe the ocean. But I think that under the ocean, you'll find a lot of bases there, whether it be alien or ours, I'm not sure. But I think that we will find the best place to hide on this planet is the ocean. What about Antarctica? Oh, Antarctica is crazy. First of all, Antarctica wasn't in that location. It was in a more hospitable location. Why? How do we know this? The animals are coming up out of the, the melting ice. And so they take them to do autopsies on them, and they have undigested food in their throats and their stomachs. So what does that tell you? They were flash frozen. So now we're talking about tectonic plate slippage. We're talking about a huge continent slipping and moving into a different position, probably within hours, not even days, and creating a global flood. And when that water washes across uh, that land with that cold air and that wind, Everything is frozen very rapidly. So this is why those animals have undigested food because they were frozen extremely fast. Mm. And uh, uh, the Antarctica was in a more hospitable location. So we know that. Now there's a giant hole down there, about 30 meters wide. This hole is visible from Google Earth. And when you look at that hole, that 30 meter wide opening, you see all the bases from the biggest countries around Earth are there in this research area. And they're all working in collaboration. No war zone. And so no war zone. There's one other area down there, though, one other research base that makes you scratch your head. The Rockefeller Foundation is there. <laughs> so they have a research base down there as well. I think right next to Germany. Uh, and so we have a guy on our, t uh, on our TV network named Brad Olson. He went down there and he got on land and got uh, and allowed to get off the boat and come on land. And it's on a TV series called uh, The Secrets of Antarctica uh, that we have on our TV network. But yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. Now, Buzz Aldrin went down there. Uh, this is when the presidents and all the famous people were going down there at one point. All the leaders of the world were going down there. He got invited to go down there. He hopped on Twitter and said, the people that they're meeting with, we're facing the most, he said, we're facing the most ultimate evil. We're facing the ultimate evil. Uh, and then the tweet got deleted about four or five hours later, but every Twitter and said, the people that were going down there at one point, all the leaders of the world were going down there, he got invited to go down there. He hopped on Twitter and said, the people that they're meeting with were facing the most, he said, we're facing the most ultimate evil, we're facing the ultimate evil. Uh, and then the tweet got deleted about four or five hours later, but everybody already screenshotted it, it's too late. And once you get it on Twitter, you know how that is. Um, and then they flew him out of there and said he was getting sick. He was coming down with some kind of cold or something. He wasn't sick. He, whatever, whoever they were meeting in that hole, he didn't like what he saw. And now to add to that, I went to do some training for remote viewing um, with Major Ed Dames. He's on, you know, you can look him up on Wikipedia. He's, he was the head at one point of the CIA remote viewing program, right? Um, Project Stargate. And so I was trained by him for two days total of about probably 16 hours, one year, the next year about another 10 hours. But when our conversations after class, he told me that there's people that live there, not from earth, that can come and go as they please. And there's nothing we can do to stop them. That's what Major Ed Dames told me. <laughs> yeah. Were you able to remote view? Yeah, yeah, I was. The reason why I did the remote viewing is because I actually took a test that was sent to Wait, me. What is remote viewing? That's when you send your mind outside of space and time to look for a target anywhere. So let's say you have a target for me. Explain and, that again. And, There's like Stranger Things. <laughs> Stranger like, Things is yeah. like an example of like remote viewing. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a whole process you have to go through. It could take hours. But let's say you, you have a, let's say you're uh, my director and you've got a target that you want me to bring back intel on. The military, the CIA used this in real time. So you will 
uh, let's say it's a target, let's say it's a file inside of a cabinet inside of a desk in Russia, you will attribute consciously a random number that's on this random number generator to that file. You'll get the number and you will sync it by thinking about this number is attached to this file that we need to get, we need to see what's in it. You will then give me, the remote viewer, the number. That's it. That's all I get. And from that, there's a process you go through. The first thing is uh, you get your, to control your breathing. And the second thing is you have to create something called an idiom, which is a scribble on a piece of paper. From there, you go into this whole process, step by step by step, of, um, of drawing what the target's bringing you. So you never physically go there, you send your mind there. And the US military and even the Russian government have used this for decades, That's the same crazy. technique. The lady I had the past life regression, she told me about that. She's yeah. like, yeah, certain colleagues of hers get uh, used by the CIA to find like assets and like, yeah, they, they do, do it. it like telepathically. They do it, they do it all the time. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I'm so confused. <laughs> How? This is nuts. I don't understand it. I have a, I'll tell you what, I have a whole four hour class I taught on this. I will send you a link to watch it for free. I'll send you the whole link. You guys can download it, watch it, and check it out. It's a four hour class and you can then duplicate the processes that I teach in that show, in that workshop, you can duplicate it for yourself. This is, yeah. Billy, <laughs> we could be here all day. <laughs> Thank you so no. much for taking the time. Is there anything else you guys want to ask Billy before we get out of here? No, I think we solved it. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much for thank sharing you. all Appreciate the stories it. with us. This has been awesome. Thank you. Uh, keep us posted. Yeah. You know what I mean? We yeah. want to know about all the new stuff going down. And if the aliens come back to you, you got to let us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You guys know where to find Billy Carson. We'll put the link below. Uh, wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. All right. <laughs>